shall have the arrival honors. Da, da, da. Kalis. Tanghal. Ta. Kalupunan, mga pinot kawal. Tanghal. Baba Ta Mga lapang ulo, handa na po ang tanod pandagal upang libutin. Baba Ta Mga lang po, tapos na po ang parangal Pagod po sa ating mga tropa Ang ating pasasalamat sa kanilang pagbigay Sa kanilang itong araw na ito Mga kasama, pinapaabot Na ating mahal na Pangulo Kagalang-galang Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. Pangulo, Republika ng Pilipinas ang kanyang taos-pusong pasasalamat sa ginawa natin parangal sa kanya sa umagang ito. Baba, kalis. The President has just been accorded with arrival honors. He is now being joined by the Chief of Staff Armed Forces of the Philippines. Following them are the Major Service Commanders of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Lieutenant General Roy M. Galido of the Army, Vice Admiral Toribio C. Adasi, Jr. of the Navy, and Lieutenant General Stephen P. Pareño of the Air Force. Also with them, the Chief of the Philippine National Police, Police Major General Romel Francisco Marbil, and the Commandant of the Philippine Coast Guard, Admiral Ronnie Hill L. Gavan. The President will proceed to the Dambana ng Kagitingan for the wreath-laying ceremony.
We shall have the wreath laying ceremony. Da, dala, kalis. Tanghal. Ta. Kalokunan, mga pinuno at kawal, tanghal. Ta. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthems of the Republic of the Philippines, United States of America, and Japan. Mahal na Pangulo, handa na po ang pag-aalay. Kahit pakaliwa. Kad. The first to offer the wreath is the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary Embassy of Japan, His Excellency Endo Kazuya.
Mr. J. De Fez, Embassy of the United States of America, Mr. Robert Y. Ewing. This time we'll now have the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. to offer the wreath, accompanied by General Ramis Browner Jr., Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Nan, mga pinuno at kawal, tanghal.
ต่างหากต่างหากต่างหากต่างหากต่างหากต่างหากต่างหากต่างหากต่างหากต่างหากบ้าบ้าตะมหาลัยปังุลุทั้งพูสนั้งพูอังพักอาลัยบ้าบ้าคัลิส That ends the wrestling ceremony here at the Dambana ng Kagitingan. In a short while, we'll have the program proper. Well, earlier, ladies and gentlemen, we had just well, we had the high opening uh, opener pass of two FA 50PH supersonic leaden fighter aircraft. This aircraft has the capability for counter air operations, maritime patrol, close air support, maritime strike, battlefield interdiction, and armed escort. Tagas Aguila ng Pilipinas, the aircraft to date is proven to be the most lethal weapon system. Able to perform diverse and versatile role in performing air defense and surface attack of the Philippine Air Force. On the other hand, we also have other air assets, the UV and Wingman under the 505 Search and Rescue Group, which conducts air search and rescue operations in support of armed forces' missions and that of civilian agencies. From here, the president will move towards the stage area. Asenso, magsikat ng mabuti at ng kuminhawa tayo. Ang malaki natin sa mundo at ipamalas ang bagong Pilipino at bagong Pilipina. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr.
We shall now begin the program on the 82nd commemoration of the Araw ng Kagitingan. The invocation will be officiated by the Reverend Father Josue V. Enero, Vicar General, Roman Catholica Diocese of Balanga and Parish Priest of St. Catherine of Shena Parish, Balanga, Bataan. Sa ngala ng Ama, ng Anak, at ng Espiritu Santo, Amen. Dinadakila naming Panginoon, Hari ng Langit at Lupa, lumikha ng lahat ng may buhay, pinupuri ka namin o Diyos na nagpapala sa aming iyong mga anak. Salamat po sa biyaya ng buhay na ipinagkaloob mo sa amin. Nagkakatipon po kami ngayon, umaga, upang alalahanin ang kagitingan ng mga Pilipino at mga dayuhang sundalo na nagbuwis ang kanilang buhay para sa bansang Pilipinas. Basbasan mo po kami ngayon na nagkakaisang pamayanan upang kami patuloy na magpunyagi sa kabayanihan ng aming mga kababayan noong ikalawang digmaang pandaigdig. Basbasan mo po ang mga veteranong nandito ngayon pang sila'y magdiwang sa kalayaan at kapayapaang kanilang pinagwagian. Basbasan mo po ang mga opisyal ng pamahalan mula sa aming Pangulo ng aming bansa hanggang sa mga namumunang lokal ng pamahalaan upang patuloy nilang mapaglingkuran na may katapatan, katarungan at katwiran ng aming bansa. Sa amin pong pagtitipon ngayon, Panginoon, buklorin mo po kami ng may spirito ng kagalakan upang maparangalan ang mga bayani ng digmaan. Akayin mo po kami, O Diyos, at aming Panginoon, tungo sa kamulatan na kaming mga Pilipino ay maging bahagi ng pag-unlad ng aming bansa. Akayin mo din po kami sa espiritu ng pagtutulungan upang sila na nasa laylayan ng lipunan ay maakit namin na makisa sa gawaing mapaunlad ang aming pamayanan. Gawin mo po kaming mga kasangkapan mo sa pagtupad ng kalooban ng Diyos Ama na maging masunurin sa saligang batas ng aming bansa tulad ng pagiging masuro namin sa batas ng iyong pag-ibig. Gawin mo po kaming instrumento ng pakikipagkasundo upang ang nagkakawatakwatak na mamamayan ay mabuklod sa pagkakaisa tungo sa mapayapang pagbabago ng sambayanan. Ikaw po, Panginoon, ang aming gabay, daan at buhay na sa taong ito na ikaw walumpu at dalawang anibarsaryo ng araw ng kagitingan ay buong tapang naming harapin ang ngayon at maraming bukas na mga hamon sa buhay at malampasan namin ang hira, pagsubok at mga sagabal na pinagdadaanan ng aming lipunan. Ang lahat po ng ito ay aming hinihiling sa matamis mong pangalan na iyong anak na si Yesus, kaisa ng Espiritu Santo, ngayon at magpakailanman. Amen. Sa ngala ng Ama, ng Anak at ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Please remain standing for the ceremonial tolling of the bell with veteran Felicissima Paharin de la Cruz and Yeshua Bryland S. Torres, a grade 7 student of Luwaka National High School, Dinalupihan District. Liberation of the Philippines, 1945. The liberation of the Philippines was not earned for free. Let us give a moment of silence for those who paid the price of freedom for our motherland. It is for them that the bell tolls. First, for the defenders of Bataan and Corregidor who fell victims to the infamous death march. They clung to life and refused to die until they could refuse no more. Second, for the Filipino and foreign forces who bitterly fought and died for the liberation of the Philippines through perilous seas, ruined towns, and jungle-clad mountains. They crawled their way to victory to liberate the motherland. Third, for the civilians who perished in the flames of war, caught in the crossfire of warring nations, nostalgic of the past, uncertain of the future, they endured through sickness and starvation in the hopes of a peaceful tomorrow. Fourth, for the guerrillas and civilians who, without certain back pay or recognition, 
fought like enlisted soldiers and commissioned officers. They went to the fray out of self-will, facing the severe consequences of retribution and death from the enemy. Fifth, for the officials and civil servants who remained behind enemy lines while others fled, with the firm conviction of serving the country until the very end. They offered the supreme sacrifice and faced execution. Sixth, for the women and children, tortured and killed in the most atrocious ways, may their harrowing stories never be forgotten and ignored. Justice alone can give them rest. And lastly, for the living veterans who carry the stories and legacies of bravery and valor, especially of their fallen comrades. Through them, we learn the heroism of Filipinos, even the smallest and simplest contributions they gave for the motherland. Their presence is an honor for all of us. We will remember those who fell in the night so we may rise to see the dawn. They bequitted us life and liberty as well as the duty to cherish and defend them like they did 82 years ago. In the present, let us work for the peace that our forebears fought and died for. Thank you. Please be seated. Our distinguished guests on this 82nd commemoration of the Aro ng Kagitingan will be formally welcomed by Governor Jose Enrique S. Garcia III of the province of Bataan. A pleasant morning to everyone, to our beloved President, His Excellency, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., To the Ambassador of Japan to the Philippines, His Excellency Endo Kazuya. <laughs> United States of America, Charge the Affair, Robert Ewing. <laughs> Dignitaries and members of the Diplomatic Corps, our national and local government officials, led by Secretary of the Department of National Defense, Gilbert Chodoro. <laughs> National Historical Commission of the Philippines Chairperson, Lisa Guerrero Napil. <laughs> Congressman Abet Garcia of the Second District of Bataan. <laughs> and Mayor Charlie Pizarro of the Municipality of Pilar. To all our distinguished guests, at higit po sa lahat ang ating pong mga veterano at kanila pong mga pamilya. Taon-taon, tuwing ika siyam ng Abril, nagiging sentro po ng atensyon ng buong mundo ang lalawigan ng bataan upang mulit-muli alalahanin hindi ang kasawian at kamatsagan kaakibat ng fall of Bataan, kundi ang kabayanihan na ipinamalas ng ating mga gerila at sundalo noong ikalawang digmaan pandaigdig. Malinaw sa ating kaisipan bilang taong mapagmahal sa kalayaan na ang masaganang dugong dumanak sa ating mga bundok at kapatagan noong gera ng 1942 ay naging katumbas ng kalayaang ating tinatamasa sa kasalukuyan. Inspirasyon po ang kabayanihang ito sa ating lahat, kaya minarapat ng ating dating Pangulo, Ferdinand Edralin Marcos, na itayo ang dambana ng kagitingan dito sa bundok ng Samat. Ito ay isang bantayog na ating binabalik-balikan upang hindi makalimutan ang mga aral ng kasaysayan patungo sa layuning hindi na maulit ang mapait na karanasan ng digmaan. 
In wars, there are no victors. Ito man lang ang maiwan nating kaisipan sa mga bagong henerasyon kada taong inaalala natin ang kahalagahan ng April 9. Sulit na ang pagbibigay daan natin sa pagtuklas ng mga kabataan sa katotohanan ito. Sa aming mga bataenyos, natatangi po ang karangalan ng araw ng kagitingan dahil dito mismo sa aming lupang sinilangan nangyari ang kabayanihan. Nakipaglaban ang mga Pilipinong matapang at tapat, kaya po sila pinagmamalaki natin sa buong mundo. Wala, walumput dalawang taon na ang nakaraan, subalit hindi lingid sa ating kaalaman na tilay patuloy pa rin ang mga pagsubok di lamang sa Pilipinas kundi sa buong mundo. Sabay-sabay ang mga gerang na mamayani sa ating panahon. Sa paggunita natin sa araw ng kagitingan ngayong taong 2024, alam kong iisa tayo sa panalangin na huwag bigyang saysay ng bawat isa ang mga aral ng kasaysayan tunay na maisabuhay ang respeto, pagbibigay karapatan, kababaang loob at hustisya. Naniniwala po akong sa mga katang katangiang ito natin, tunay na may mapamalas ang totoong pagmamahal sa bayan. Dahil kung tunay tayo nagmamahal sa bayan, uunahin natin ang kapakanan ng ating mga kababayan. Tandaan po natin, walang bayan kung walang kababayan. Kaya po dito sa Bataan, pangunahin sa amin ang pagbibigay ng mataas na pagpapahalaga sa buhay at kalusugan ng bawat pamilyang Bataenyo. Kung kaya't sa tulong po ng ating Pangulo ng DOH at PhilHealth, kabilang tayo sa mga unang nagpapatupad ng Primary Care Provider Network o pagpapalakas ng health unit sa mga bayan na naayon sa Universal Health Care Law. Kasabay po nito ang commitment ng aming 237 barangay upang tutukan ang positive health outcomes na bahagi ng aming One Bataan Seal of Healthy Barangay na kinilala ng Galing Pook Foundation nito pong 2023 bilang Outstanding Local Government Program. Kaugnay po nito ang aming healthy paaralan kung saan ay masustansyang pagkain ang aming inihain sa pananghalian sa mga mag-aaral sa piling pampublikong paaralan sa mababa at mataas na paaralan. Ngayong araw din po, makakasama namin ang ating mahal na Pangulo sa turnover ng 4PH housing units dito po sa lungsod ng Balanga. Ang akin pong mga nabanggit ay ilan lamang sa mga pamaraan naming mga bataenyo na pagpapakita ng pagmamahal sa aming mga kababayan. Sa aking pagtatapos, bayaan niyo ninyong pasalamatan ko ang lahat ng ating mga panauhing nagbigay ng panahon upang bumisita at bigyang halaga ang aming lalawigan sa pag-aalaala ng dakilang araw na ito. Tanggapin po ninyo ang aming tauspusong pasasalamat at mainit na pagmamahal. Isang pagpupugay sa ating mga veterano at maligayang pagunita ng araw ng kagitingan sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much to Governor Jose Enrique S. Garcia III of the province of Bataan. May we now have the overview of today's event from the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, Chairperson Lisa Guerrero Nakpil. On behalf of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, good morning, Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr., Ambassador Kazuya, Honorable Mr. Ewing, uh, Chief of Staff General Bronner, Governor Garcia, Congressman Garcia, Mayor Pizarro, illustrious guests. Today and every year, we remember the Filipino soldier and with him, ang tapang, tibay, at talino ng Pilipino. Forged in the crucible of Corredor and Bataan, Facing a formidable enemy, our soldiers
became the inspiration and symbol of our armed forces and indeed of our entire nation. Ito ang tapang ng Pilipino. On that cruel day, on April 9, 1942, 60,000 Filipino soldiers and 10,000 Americans embarked on a march where the most strong and the most valiant would be tested. They endured hunger and thirst, disease and desperation, marching to camps in Tarlac, Cabanatuan, and even to distant Manchuria. But they marched on, taas nuo. Ito ang tibay ng Pilipino. The Filipino soldier stands shoulder to shoulder with the best in the world. He fights with his wits and all of his God-given talents. Ito ang talino ng Pilipino. At dahil sa tapang, tibay, talino ng Pilipino, we will always emerge victorious in spirit and against all odds. For their glorious example, the Filipino nation, our nation, will always be in the debt of the men of April 9. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Thank you very much to the National Historical Commission of the Philippines Chairperson, Lisa Guerrero Nakpil. From here, ladies and gentlemen, the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary Embassy of Japan, His Excellency Endo Kazuya, will give his message. His Excellency President Ferdinando R. Marcos Jr. Honorable Secretary of National Defense Gilbert Teodoro, Honorable Members of the Cabinet, Honorable Members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, Chairperson Lisa Guerrero Nakpil, National Historical Commission, Under Secretary Mapag Reynold, Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, Mr. Robert Ewing, Charge d'Affaires, the U.S. Embassy, Governor Jose Enrique Garcia, esteemed Filipino veterans, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Maganda umaga po sa inyong lahat. As I said about in fulfilling my duty to become a bridge between Japan and the Philippines, I'm deeply honored to join you today in solemnly commemorating the brave souls of Filipino people. I stand here with a profound sense of reverence on the hallowed grounds that bore witness to the Battle of Bataan 82 years ago. Facing the history and reflecting on the bravery of those who made the ultimate deeds and sacrifice during the war is the very foundation of our future-oriented relationship. My heartfelt condolences go out to the, uh, their families who carried the burden of their loss. To the war veterans with us today, whose service played a vital role in the peace and freedom we embrace today, my sincerest respect and gratitude is with you. Japan-Philippines friendship rose from the ashes of conflict almost eight decades ago. Since then, our predecessors have made tireless efforts to rebuild and nurture mutual trust between our two nations on the basis of deep remorse for Japan's action during the war. Now, Japan and the Philippines have overcome the shadows of the bitter past to be strategic partners and the closest of friends, built upon a foundation of mutual respect, trust, and shared values. Our partnership has substantially deepened in all areas. Last year, President Marcos's visits to Japan and Prime Minister Kishida's visit to the Philippines brought into fruition of a transformative and forward-looking strategic partnership, particularly at the summit meeting last November, 
we welcome the start of negotiations on the reciprocal access agreement of which two countries have reaffirmed close coordination in order to reach an early conclusion. Amidst the increasing complexity surrounding the regional and international realm, Japan places a pivotal importance in upholding the right to freedom of navigation and overflight and respect for maritime rights under international law. Japan over the years has conscientiously enhanced cooperative efforts with the Philippines and other like-minded countries. On the day before yesterday, Japan and the Philippines participated in maritime cooperative activity in the South China Sea together with the United States and Australia. Guided by the vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific, Japan strives to actualize concrete projects that bolster the maritime domain awareness and maritime law enforcement capabilities of the Philippines. The newly established cooperation scheme, the official security assistance, will serve to provide coastal radar systems to the Philippines Navy. Likewise, Japan will be promptly realizing the provision of five additional multi-role response vessels to the Philippine Coast Guard. In line with our commitment to create a brighter future for both our peoples, Japan is determined to elevate our bilateral relations to further heights by giving rise to greater opportunities for cooperation in a wider range of areas, including people-to-people -people exchanges, trade and investment, infrastructure building, maritime law enforcement, and defense cooperation. We, the Japanese people, are determined to never allow the devastation of war to be repeated ever again for the sake of present and future generations. By upholding the international order based on the rule of law, Japan and the Philippines, together with other like-minded countries, become united partners in building a world founded on peace, harmony, and goodwill. As we face difficult international situations around the world, such as those in Ukraine and the Middle East, as well as the complex security environment in the Indo-Pacific region, including in the East and South China Seas and over Taiwan Strait, Japan reaffirms its commitment to maintain and strengthen the rule-based international and maritime order that we have protected together for decades. We must never allow any attempts to unilaterally change the status quo by force. With this in mind, our trilateral cooperation with the Philippines and the United States serves as a symbol of our shared commitment to promote a free and open international order based on the rule of law, to showcase our testament in further strengthening trilateral cooperation we look forward to the historic first ever Japan-Philippines-US summit meeting with the participation of His Excellency, uh, President Marcos, the day after tomorrow. Together, we will continuously work towards steadily materializing cooperative efforts in the areas of defense, strategic infrastructure, cyber, economic security, and energy. Let us seize this moment to reaffirm our commitment as strategic partners, an ally, uh, and friends in building a future preserving the peace and prosperity in the region. I believe that this is the best tribute we can offer to the souls of those who passed away in the fighting that took place here 82 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, I re assure you all that Japan and the Philippines will continue to cooperate fully in ensuring greater progress and prosperity for our nations and the world at large in times of both crisis and prosperity. Once again, please allow me to express my sincere gratitude and respect to all the veterans who fought for the peace of the nation and the world. 
Mabuhay ang pagkakaibigan ng Japan at Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you to His Excellency Endo Kazuya, the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary Embassy of Japan. Let us hear the message of the Charge de Affairs to the Philippines Embassy of the United States of America, Mr. Robert Y. Ewing. Thank you. It's a great honor to represent the United States here today. We are at Mount Samat to remember the shared sacrifice and the courage of the Filipino and American soldiers who fought side by side to uphold freedom 82 years ago during the Battle of Bataan. The commemoration of the Day of Valor reminds us of the power of the human spirit and the ability to persevere and preserve during the darkest of times. It also gives us the opportunity to pause and reflect on the profound stories of our veterans and their devastating experiences during World War II. It makes the peace and the freedom that we experience today even more cherished as we recall the sacrifices that made it possible. At this site, 82 years ago, Filipinos and Americans endured the trauma of World War II. Many did not survive. Following the war, our nations worked to rebuild together. The rebuilding strengthened the bonds between the United States and the Philippines, evolving into the ironclad relationship we cherish today. Our story does not end there. I am inspired that today, 79 years after the liberation, we see the extraordinary cooperation that once enemies are now undertaking for our common good. The United States, the Philippines, and Japan are working together today on advancing our shared priorities. We are finding more areas to develop our trilateral cooperation. Last year, the Philippines, the US, and the Japanese Coast Guards carried out their first trilateral joint exercises. Weeks later, the national security advisors of all three nations met together to discuss matters of mutual concern and areas for cooperation. And a few months later, the US Secretary of State, Philippine Secretary of Foreign Affairs, and Japanese Minister of Foreign Affairs met to continue that co uh, conversation. This week, President Biden will host President Marcos and Japanese Prime Minister Kishida at the White House for the first Trilateral Leaders Summit. They will advance a partnership based on deep historical ties, robust economic relationships, a resolute commitment to shared democratic values, and a shared vision for a free and open Indo-Pacific. Could anyone in 1945 in any of our countries possibly have imagined the extraordinary state of our relationship and that cooperation today. Here on Mount Samat, we recommit ourselves to the quest for peace. We stand united with the Philippines as friends, partners, and allies. On behalf of the United States, I offer our deepest gratitude to all the veterans and their families joining us today. Thank you for your service, thank you for your sacrifice, and thank you for the enduring alliance of the Philippines and the United States service members who stood shoulder to shoulder in the name of freedom. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you to the SRJ uh, the Affairs Embassy of the United States of America, Mr. Robert Y. Ewing. The guest of honor will now be introduced by Secretary Gilberto C. Chidora, Jr. of the Department of National Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary uh, Gilbert Tudoro, for your kind introduction. Please uh, take your seats. His, uh, uh, His Excellency uh, Charles John Brown, a Dean of the Diplomatic Corps and the other Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps here today. 
His Excellency Endo Kazuya, Ambassador of Japan to the Philippines, Mr. Robert Ewing, the Chargé de Affairs of the U.S. in the Philippines, Governor Jose Enrique Garcia of the province of Bataan, Congressman uh, Alberto Raymond Garcia, District Representative of the 2nd District of Bataan, Mayor Carlos Pizarro, our host today, Chairperson Lisa Guerrero Nakpil of the uh, National Commission of the Philipp National Historical Commission of the Philippines, uh, Under Secretary Renaldo Mapago, the Administrator of the Veterans Affairs Office, the Reverend Father Jose Enero, Vicar General, Roman Catholic Catholica Diocese of Balanga, and Parish Priest of Saint Catherine of Siena Parish. Miss Yeshua Brylen S. Flores, Grade 7, Luwakan High School, this, uh, uh, Dinalipu, Dinali, Dinalupihan District. And Mr. Felicissimo Paran de, de, de la Cruz, World War II veteran. And of course, the uh, most important guests that we have here are the veterans, not only of the Second World War, but all of our veterans who are here today. My fellow workers in, in government, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We gather here today in annual remembrance of the series of events of 1942, which all of us Filipinos hold dearly to our hearts. It is of high importance to us, compelled not, my, not by mere law or presidential issuance, but by sheer heritage, by our shared history, by the proud example of our compatriots whom we revere as our real heroes. Indeed, this occasion should not be seen as a, as a tiresome recollection of a horrendous loss recorded in our history, nor just as a yearly exercise in remembrance of uh, a terrible time in our history. As the day of valor, it is a fitting tribute to our Filipino soldiers from all over the country who bravely fought in World War II side by side with our allies. Most especially to the more than 60,000 of them who were pummeled and forced into submission during the fall of Bataan. And their fate did not end in that surrender on home soil. Those who were spared from execution had to endure the equally difficult and horrendous death march the prison camps that awaited them, and those who survived this excruciating journey on foot. Described by historians as a tragic nightmare without form, reason, or mercy, the death march was yet another extreme test of the will, both physically and mentally, of every Filipino. Our fighters went on for days in the sweltering summer heat with no food, no medicine, under terrible malarial conditions. Their severely weakened bodies, further wilted by depression, were forcibly mobilized by threats of beatings and possible execution. We will forever be in debt to our heroes, those who perished, and the survivors who stared death in the eye and lived to tell the tale, some of whom are with us here today. For them, the higher and nobler cause made their supreme sacrifice worth enduring. And on a much deeper level, the fall of Bataan is not just a past event that we commemorate. It serves as a constant reminder of our singular purpose towards the future as one nation, supported by like-minded allies in this post-war rules-based international order. As recounted, the retreat, of, uh, the retreat to Bataan was a strategic defense in depth the plan was to hold out for as long as possible until external support arrived. Bataan was a crucial last bastion. Mount Samat functioned as its veritable watchtower. Bataan, as well as Curejidor, Caballo, El Fraile, and Carabao Islands, all proved to be strategic sites in the defense of our archipelago. We have been blessed not only with persevering and valorous people, 
Our own natural resources furnished us with both sustenance and the means for our own self-defense. And as fate would have it, the battle that was initially lost, the war would be eventually be won. In that stunning reversal, the fall of Bataan thus marked the resurgence of the genuinely independent and sovereign Philippines. 82 years on, our nation remains confronted with novel challenges in varying forms and degrees, but with the same existential impact. Some portend clear and present threats to our sovereign rights and in fact have already caused physical harm to our people. Ang mga ito ay hindi katanggap-tanggap, hindi makatwiran o makatarungan, lalo na sa panahong ito ng payapang pakikipag-ugnayan ng mga bansa. Naway magsilbing inspirasyon ng mga kaganapan noong 1942 at ang tagumpay natin noong 1945 sa ating lahat. Ngayon din sa ating kabataan at sa mga ating susunod na salinlahi, tulad ng pinamalas ng ating mga dakilang ninuno, hindi tayo dapat magpasupil at magpaapi, lalo na sa loob ng ating sariling bakuran. Naway mapagkuna natin ito ng pangibayong kamalayan, tapang at lakas ng loob. Higit sa lahat, naway patuloy nitong pagtibay ng ating pagkakaisa at ang ating pagiging makabansa. We must leverage these lessons if we are to safeguard the future of our republic. The sacrifices of our heroes must galvanize us and strengthen our national consciousness, our patriotic spirit. The present-day armed forces continue this noble duty of safeguarding our nation's security and our sovereignty. And in recognition of their bravery and sacrifices, I am directing the Defense, Budget, and Finance Departments to study the existing separation benefits of soldiers who incurred total permanent disability in the line of duty to see if these are commensurate to the sacrifices that they have made and submit the recommendation while taking stock of the national government's position. We are doubling our efforts. We are doubling our efforts to enhance the, their, operational, their operational capability. We must therefore also ensure their safety by procuring the right equipment. I therefore task the TND and AFP to assess and submit a report on the responsiveness of the current inventory of military supplies and equipment. These measures aim to show our unwavering support to our soldiers as they face new and growing challenges. Ours is a complicated world today, but we must not yield. We must not back down from any and all challenges that seek to threaten our peace, our honor, our very existence. This shrine and all the nameless Filipino war heroes that it represents beckon to us. May we all be inspired by their unbreakable will, unflappable courage, and undying patriotism. The spirit that made Bataan stand cannot and must never fail. Mabuhay ang mga alaala ng ating mga bayaning Pilipino. Mabuhay ang ating mga veterano. Mabuhay ang sambayan ng Pilipino. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. Sa puntong ito po, nagtatapos ang ating pagunita sa ikawalumput dalawang taong anibersaryo ng Araw ng Kagitingan. Our warmest uh, appreciation to one and all for joining us in the observance of the 82nd Araw ng Kagitingan and the 2024 Philippine Veterans Week. Nais po nating uh, muling pasalamatan ang ating butihing Pangulong Marcos sa kanyang pagdalo sa okasyong ito. Palakpakan po natin ang ating panauhing pandangal. Isa rin pong masigabong palakpakan para sa ating mga veterano. Mabuhay ang ating mga veterano. Mabuhay ang bagong Pilipinas. Isang mapagpalang araw ang sumaating lahat. Marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat.
Muli po ang Pangulong Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. Sa mundo at ipamalas, 